Yeah, but now most I'm, authors ended up being in like journalism. Yeah. Where they were writing what they wanted to write on the side, and then they were doing you know a few stories a week for a paper. Which is what I was going to do too. Right. That's why your concentration is journalism. Yes. I, w I was going to do that too, but it turned out like that was a really great blessing for me not to end up doing that because, I mean, now the media is fake. Like, it was probably fake before. But it's way worse now. It's way it? worse now. Like, I'm glad I'm not. I couldn't go around. They can publish anything they want with no retractions. Yeah, if that's stuff we were not taught in All college. All stuff that's opinion, that's not That's not facts. facts. Like, that's not what we were taught. So, yeah. these people are definitely going against the journalism code. And that's not something that I could have done as a person. Like, you know what I'm saying? That would have been devastating for me to have to write a story or being told I have to do something that's not ethical and then me having to quit. But you know honestly, I mean? for, for people to read articles now, it almost has to be so fictitious. Yeah, that people want to read it. That people would want to read it. Otherwise, people aren't going to click on it. Right. To read it. But that's sad. But that's been the, uh, the disruption of the industry. For sure. Because right. everybody used to get the paper. No, no, very few people ever get the paper. Your mom still gets the paper. Mm -hmm. I picked it up for her on the way <laughs> and when I went to see her. <laughs> yeah, she still reads it. Yeah. They did not deliver it to her doorstep though. It was like in the gravel. Like she had to walk for that. I was like, mm mm. Anyway. Yeah, they'd at least have a box for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like in the middle of the driveway. I'm like, how did she go get this? I don't understand. But anyways. So yeah, that's But that used to issue. be like they used to be like everybody's first job was the paper route. Mm. Was it yours? No. <laughs> then it wasn't everybody's. Well, yeah, everybody can't be a paper boy. I help deliver papers. Yeah. But in a car, not on a bike. But Meredith was a little entrepreneur from a small child. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we'll talk about that. I can. <laughs> I did a... Um, I've had multiple, like, first of all, I'm a hustler. Like, we'd have garage sales, and I'd be hustling these little kids. These little kids would be, like, I would find something that they liked, or like, my mom, basically, too, would put things out on the, for sale mm -hmm. that she thought we didn't play with, or whatever. We probably didn't. But, like, I would put on this whole scene, like, this little girl wanted this baby doll, and they were going to check out, and my mom was like, you know, that's 50 cents or whatever. And like, I had a meltdown, breakdown moment. I was like, you can't sell my baby. Like, I was like freaking <laughs> out. Like, you can't sell my baby. I still play with it. And the, then the little girl started getting all mad because she wanted it. So she was having a meltdown. We were both arguing, having meltdown, snatching the baby back and forth. And my mom was like, well, Mer Meredith, if you could, what? You have to, we have to sell this baby doll. So, what do you want to sell it for? And I said, five dollars. I won't play no games. And my mom was like, that's a, he was like, Mary, that's a little high. I said, if she wants it, she'll then she'll pay the five dollars. Mm -hmm. That was me at five years old. And yeah. guess what? That lady paid five dollars for that little broken, busted baby. And <laughs> well, now our kid wanted it, right? And then I went, yeah, that's supply so and demand. Mm -hmm. She wanted it, I wanted it. I'll be, I'm willing to give it up for a certain price though, and that's what happened. Um, then of so course, everything's for sale for to you. Basically, everything everything's, everything's got a price. I do not care. I mean, I do care, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Like it's not worth that. It, it's worth. I'd rather take the cash. I mean, just saying. But so then, I also had a garbage business. So I would roll people's garbage pails up and down like their house and we lived in townhouses so like on my side we had flat grass so like I would go around to the backyards take their trash pull it around and it would be a dollar to pull it up a dollar to take it back and I had a little notebook and I would keep up with who paid and who didn't pay um I had like a checks and balances and like people who paid in advance I knew and I had like a little notebook and wrote it down and then basically 
when I moved, I sold it to another kid in the street, down the street, and I said, um, you know, I'm moving. You, you can have my business. Here's, you know, I was like eight. I was like, you can have my business, but you got to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So he actually paid me money and I doubt, I don't really remember how much it was. It probably wasn't like a huge amount. I mean, I'm moving. So, you know, I wasn't going to keep those clients anyways. So he bought my book of business and I'm pretty sure the business failed, but I mean, I still got my money for it. So why are you looking like that? So she was an entrepreneur from a very young age. And then I sold CDs in high school. <laughs> I was probably illegal, but, um... We don't know the statute of limitations, so we're just cutting that. Are we? <laughs> I don't care. I, but, sold, I sold CDs in high school. I don't care. Yeah. There were people that sold candy in high school. That's what I'm saying. My whole high school were entrepreneurs. Yeah, selling. They just didn't know it. They didn't know they were entrepreneurs. We'd be selling CDs. they sell candy, sodas. People would sell their lunch that they got free lunch. They would sell their lunch to somebody else and then they would use that money and then buy French fries and pizza that weren't on their um, free lunch. We had people that, you know, sold those, sold that. <laughs> I mean, my whole high school was just like, whoosh, 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 you know, transaction, 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 you know, I mean, I'm just saying, I felt really in my element when I actually moved to that high school. <laughs> so, if people know that the college system right now is overpriced, why do they continue to go? I heard the ice cream truck. You hear it? Dang, you fat. Damn. <laughs> Hear it from that far away. But if it was, no, it's probably just the Kona Ice people. That is not the same as ice cream truck. Right. Oh. Oh, they got the hood ice cream truck. What? You hear it? That is not a regular ice cream truck stature. You hear it? It's like ding, mm -hmm. ding, 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 ding. It's, anyways. Um. Distracted. I want ice cream. My first initial thing is to like being a kid and going to grab my dollar and going out. It's probably like five dollars now, but um, so that's entrepreneurship right there. What ice cream trucks? For right? sure. Right. I mean, if you didn't look so creepy, then I'd put you behind the <laughs> behind the wheel. Right. <laughs> No, you but made me this way. I don't, I'm just playing. You don't look creepy. I'm just, I'm just playing. The only reason I keep this line is because you like it. That's not. I'm not even talking about that. That's not creepy. But anyways, <laughs> people pay for college knowing it's overpriced because they get peer pressured into going to college from their family. Like I'm a first generation well, college. The reason is because 90% of the Americans that are in the 1% went to college. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. I, but I'm most peer people could be peer pressured to go. Like I never got, I never got to go, so I want you to go. So, if, so if the goal when coming to America is to make it, and ninety percent of the people that made it went to college, it it peer pressures you into going to college. Well, you remember also, even though that made the the profession that you would get after college may not be what fits you. Right? Or you may yeah. not even know what profession you want to do. But do you remember us watching TV and watching old, like, 10-year-old shows like The Vampire Diaries and how, like, that's just an example. There were plenty of shows we rewatched. They all pushed college. Oh, 100%. You're like, going to college. You're going to college. Um, if I mean, you don't that go was to all the way from, like, elementary school if you so. don't go to college like you're not going to be anything like they were implanting college in our generation since we were born mm -hmm. you know like in everything media tv radio. school radio i mean it was a big deal and like you grew up i grew up knowing that i was going to go to college so then when i started applying to colleges i was like I don't really want to go to college. Like, I really did not want to go. I was really smart. 
I mean, I, I mean, I am still smart, but yeah, I, I mean, mean, it's not, it's not a, a difference of intellect. It was just like, I had no idea what I wanted to do. So why am I going to go waste or, you know, invest, not waste four years plus of my life into something that, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was like one of t like a hundred, but there was like four of us when you go to orientation and then there was like 500 people in the orientation class and they say, all right, all the people that want to do nursing, go to this table. Mm -hmm. All the people that want to go teaching, do this table. It was me and like four other people that were undecided. 